Welcome, everybody, to the SUP Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me, we have my two partners in crime. We have Luke Trevisi. What's up, buddy? What's up, everybody? We got Lawrence Deloach. What's good, bro? Doing, bro. What's up, man? Uh, and then we have a special guest today, one of the fan favorites, Atlanta's own, Robert Hayes, buddy. What's up? Yo, the MVP, Rob Hayes, right here. Yeah, and we need you to come through just because, you know, Atlanta be cracking right now. Hey, man, mm-hmm. Atlanta's always cracking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Better cr- crisscross. It was cracking back then. You know what I'm saying backwards. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, TLC. Uh, what Chris was trying to say is, uh, yeah, we, Atlanta's doing very well right now. You guys are <laughs> in the news. Uh, you have you have hit mainstream uh, levels that we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, Versus had their 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 probably their most uh, scrutinized and watched battle of uh, Jeezy versus Gucci Mane. And mm-hmm. you're from Atlanta, so I want to know what the fuck. Was the temperature, man, in Atlanta? What was what were people think talking about in Georgia, bro? Um, I mean, it really just was a uh it was a generational divide. Not even generational, but just like, you know, there was a mixtapes versus hits divide. Mm-hmm. And there was a there was a separation on two different ways to go about a situation, two different interpretations of a situation. Uh, what I found myself doing, I was kind of torn. I felt like it was too close to call personally with my personal taste. I had Jeezy edging out Gucci by one, but Ooh. I also had nine ties. And so me having nine <laughs> ties, that's, you know, that's pretty you much like nine t- Yo, you, that is because you're a purist then because like you really are in the middle. To have nine ties is crazy. That's a lot. Of Nine time. times, but if, if I, there was a, too many things that it was like I don't like comparing these. You know, like I I know what all there does, but there wouldn't be a all there without bricks. You know, like it's just one of those things where I'm I'm I hate the bias. I hate the people who are in one place and they um they know. They only know the Jeezy records, so then they only voted for the Jeezy records. If you don't know Gucci's mixtape stuff, then this wasn't the battle for you to score. This wasn't the battle, you know, like go just rescore DJ Premier and RZA. You know what I'm saying? Just rescore something you know. Like don't, don't come over here. And it's two things playing, and one is a like one song to you is a classic, but both songs to me is a classic. When I hear I'm a dog, like that's a, that was a game changer. When you out, that was a, a game changer. Like that was a song everybody, everybody liked. Whether you were the thug, everybody was scared of, whether you was, you know, no the biggest, it don't matter. It don't matter who you were. When I'm a dog came on, everybody was happy. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like it's just one of them one of them things where the the beef and the situation I feel like affected Gucci's life way more than Jeezy's life. And you know, a lot of Gucci's music and a lot of Gucci not being able to travel, being able to tour, being able to leave the city had an effect on his career too you know maybe we don't get all those mixtapes if he goes on a tour and links up with this person and travels and has these different experiences maybe gucci man is totally different you know Mm. but all that being said i don't really like talking about it to people who who don't you know not as familiar with the gucci side of things so i've been kind of even though gz won in my personal opinion i've been kind of arguing more for the Gucci because I really am against the idea that it was a blowout. I don't think it was a blowout, but I think a lot of people kind of got turned off that Gucci. I think he kind of, it it felt like, you know, obviously there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of anger coming from, from Gucci in terms of, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the story of, you know, Jeezy putting a $10,000, you know, bounty on, on, on the chain 
and then Gucci, you know, killing one of, you know, BMF Jeezy's associates. Allegedly. 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 Yes. Allegedly. But I mean, it, you know, we, we have, you know, it's the court records basically said, you know, or not the court records, but it, it was said that this was in self-defense. Yeah. So I think, so what I'm saying also is, yeah, Gucci has over 70 mixtapes that he's released. And when you and when you're comparing uh, a guy in Jeezy who was behind a major record label in Def Jam, and he was doing you know tracks with at Jay Z and Akon and Rick Ross and Kanye West, and then you have a guy like Gucci, yeah, you're gonna know the Jeezy stuff. Like you are, it's just the way it is. I mean, you know, when when Jeezy's playing songs off his first album that you know multi platinum the Gucci mixtapes. But what I'm saying to you is, and, and this is what I'm going to say, I did feel like, yes, Jeezy did win, but also at the same time, Gucci had so many hits that I was like, oh, shit, I remember this. And there were songs that he left on the table. I wanted to hear Freaky Girl. Definitely. I wanted to hear Freaky Girl. You in Magic City. But see, the, the, only, the only way that no violence happens is the magical place that is Magic City. <laughs> but I don't, I don't understand why Magic City, they didn't they didn't play Freaky Girl. They didn't play Go Ahead. They didn't play Super Freak. They didn't, you know, they, they left a lot of a lot of feminine energy that could have helped the situation on the table. It was a lot of testosterone on and, that on that stripper stage at, at one time. And that's what I definitely, I definitely agree with you on. I said, I felt like, God damn, every song was just like a fucking, it was like the, like you said, the hardcore shit. And a lot mm -hmm. of the times, like, you know, even when you look at a, another versus like a Rick Ross versus uh, well, 2 Chains, they played the the stripper music. They played the, you know, I mean, Rick Ross had strippers. I mean, Chains had strippers come out. You know what I'm saying? So. And Rick Ross had massage. the massage. And he the was massage like, was great. <laughs> he was like, so, no, but get my neck, though. <laughs> you, 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 you look at DMX. Right DMX and, and Snoop, you know, they, they had the songs, you know, that that women, you know, would enjoy. It just felt like these two guys were just playing. And I feel like Jeezy would have played more, but Gucci was just like, fuck it, I'm going to shoot every shot at you. You know, his... But don't act like Gucci didn't have records with, with big people, too. Gucci had a record with Mariah Carey. Gucci had a record with Bruno Mars. Gucci got records with, you know, all kind of people. I just think Gucci played five disc records. That and was the problem. Seen anyone play a disc record in a versus and, and that, I that think, was the problem no i think it what, is. what happens is we take precedence we give precedence too much value versus is a new thing it is is not even a year old it's a new phenomenon and when it started it was one thing and it's turned into something very similar but that doesn't mean that's what it's always going to be we watch smack all the time we watch rap battles all the time if there were two artists that have a ton of disc records against each other that might be a totally different scenario than a celebration play your top hits because honestly these are two artists who probably don't care about their top hits and their core fans probably don't care about their top hits so why on the greatest, biggest stage do I got to play Go Hard with Rihanna and you got to play Obsessed with Mariah Carey because those hits did so well? You know, I think, well, I think you've seen in the past, I think you've seen in past verses, I think that's what, it's more of a nostalgia thing with a lot of these artists where they play, they play songs that people are like, oh my God, I remember, that was crazy. And people have gotten mad, like, damn, why did they leave this off, off, off you know, off the, the, the bone? Like you, so people want that in this. What, what happened was Gucci immediately, the first song was a fucking diss record, and that set the tone for it how, was hell perfect. yeah, it did. It was, <laughs> that was, that was, that was fucking was. awesome. It was great. So perfect. So the thing is, is that this, this is the verses that I think most people want. Like the, the history, the tension, like they had a conversation beforehand because after he played the one where he's talking about Pookie, um, he was like, you, you know, Jeezy started doing his like not rant, but he started doing his little like lecture thing. And he was like, yo, I told you I was going to play this shit. Like I told you. So they had a conversation prior. Right. So he had that planned aspect to it. Jeezy plays 
bitch, get your mind right. Yeah. I don't know what you think message that was trying to send, but that was, you know what I'm saying? I think both of them did what they do. Gucci was the dude that he is, and Jeezy was the motivational speaker trying to motivate the thugs. Mm -hmm. Gucci was the thug, and and mm -hmm. Jeezy was the, you know, the thug motivation. Like, I feel like they both were themselves, but that being said, you know, just because here's the thing with producers the 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 biggest hit matters songwriters the biggest hit matters but with rap it could be different and i think and i think that you know as someone who watched mixed tapes in their progression state records just because you know they're streamable now if you need to catch up you can go catch up you pay that ten dollars a month you might as well do something with it you know what i'm saying <laughs> that money gonna go to a dj somewhere but hey i feel like you know like let's let's not discount mixtapes like that's not what we spend a lot of our time listening to a lot of our time loving just because fab picked the wrong mixtape joints don't mean that you can't have a mixtape run in a versus no, I, I, I definitely yeah. agree with you. I do want to I do want to switch it up a little bit. You guys, uh, one thing that both rappers did say and a lot of people said after the verse is that it was definitely for the culture. And I, I do like that statement because I feel like Jeezy was one of the first rappers that really took the merch game to another level oh facts that's mm. my my friend eric in high school got suspended for wearing a snowman shirt i think everyone on i like i mean i remember you know i i had the the snowman shirt i was wearing it when i was in college i was wearing the classes you know people knew what it was the you know teeth the professors did not uh it, <laughs> that but that but that shirt is it's so historical because i mean that that shirt went national where the CNN was reporting it. Local news was reporting it. It was banned. Like, you know, it was the, you can't ban the snowman. And I, and I, mm -hmm. and I, and I, and I, and I just really, and I just want to say that like, you know, yeah, these two guys are both in their forties, but they have kind of well, Jeezy in terms of the, the shirt, how iconic it is. It also laid forth a blueprint of rappers, I think getting a, a, a symbolic, merch that they're able to run with and make hella money off of. Yeah, the branding Jeezy, by Jeezy didn't even make a lot of the money off of off of the snowman as much as it was taking place. Like, well, it was like bootlegged it a was, lot. Yeah. yeah, It was bootlegged a lot and it wasn't looked frowned upon. It was looked at as like where else am I going to get it? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also, Lawrence, if you showed up to my office hours in a snowman shirt, you getting whatever grade you want. I already know it. Oh, five? I'm terrified. If somebody show up and take out a snowman shirt, Bro. it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I remember, like I said, I always talk about. I say, yeah, I remember wearing it in school, and and my professor was like, "Why is the snow? Why is he so angry?" You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and it was just one of those things, man. It was like if you knew, you knew. And and I and it's interesting because I I I do want to kind of like not change lanes a little bit, but I do want to talk about this because I think everyone was trying to cap not everyone, but a lot of people have capitalized off of Gucci and Jeezy, mm -hmm. and we saw we saw one of the biggest rappers uh, in the game who is fucking a merch peddler, and he's a Kardashian, <laughs> <laughs> Travis Scott. Oh shit! That, that was that was a typical that was a typical Kardashian move. He fucking <laughs> sold Gucci and Jeezy merchandise, had nothing to do with it. And it's just like, what are you what are your thoughts on Travis? Like what's what the fuck, man? I I appreciate it. Cause if I see somebody with that shirt on, I already know they're not official. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I Boom. appreciate it. Like weed Boom. them out. Weed them out. Show me who if you got cactus jack on top of Gucci and Jeezy's chain, then it's like bet. I already know who you. I don't. I'm not talking music with you, buddy. It that's similar to the aspect I was saying about the PlayStation shit. He's like hoard himself out too quickly. He started off with like a ton of respect. It was building very casual, like very rapidly, but like at a steady pace. And now he just like threw that respect right out the window. 
started with. But the, if I if I successfully sell McDonald's merch, also haven't gotten my shirt yet. It's been three months. You know, they sent me an email last <laughs> you have, week. You haven't gotten saying, your merch yet. Hey, they sent me an email last week saying, "Hey, we need three more months." We, <laughs> actually, they said we need nine to fifteen more weeks. Like, like that's oh gonna make it small. Yeah. Bro. So I don't know if you know Stormy making it by hand or what's going on, but <laughs> anyway, uh, you know I feel like the McDonald's thing was a was a brand risk, and when after that successful, I'm probably thinking, oh, I could sell anything. Yeah, I well, what, could what, sell anything. What what, I, I what would make you say Ryan McNugget pillows? It's a wrap. Rob, what would make you say it's a it's a risk? Because it, to me, it's just like, yo, this guy is collaborating with one of the biggest. Entities. Public it, 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 the, the, historically, that was historically there was a, you know, selling out was a thing. And I think that, you know, um, his crowd and their opinions on McDonald's, their opinions on big corporations, their opinions on fast food might not align like he thought, you know, there there were some risk involved. There were some, you know, just because he messes with McDonald's doesn't mean the Travis Scott fan in 2020 messes with McDonald's. Doesn't mean getting next to a big company in a pandemic is necessarily going to work. So I, I think there were some risks, like it was successful, but I, I do think that there were some risk. And after those risks were, you know, avoided, then it's like, oh, well, maybe I could do anything. Well, well I, I look at Travis Scott. I mean, his his fan base is fucking young kids. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you look at, I mean, you look at the majority of Travis Scott, man, what is it? You know, they're teenagers, they're early 20s, mid-20s. Like, that's that's like the Travis, because that's the Travis Scott generation. So him pairing with McDonald's, I mean, I don't, that's fucking, I mean, that's par for the course for me. I mean, that's big, the fact that Trav was, you know, like how many people had their own specialty sandwich? Michael Jordan, Travis Scott. Well, the other thing is, though, dude, is he's doing less and less with each new brand partnership. The company is bigger, but he's less a part of it. Now he's at the point where he didn't even fucking do anything. He took other people's iconic shit and put them on a shirt and put Cactus Jack on the back. Well, that's what I was going to say. He also said TM1017 instead of, you know what I'm saying, TM101. 1017. So, you know what I'm saying? He took those things, put them together, so... Yeah, it's uh, it's it definitely felt that definitely <laughs> felt culture. I mean, felt very extremely Ooh. culture vultureish. You know, I didn't, I really didn't, I didn't I like, like that. the Playstations. I, I they're um the PlayStation I, they, Dunks. I ain't like them. I, it's you know, it's extremely it's hype. You know, everyone you know, you get a yeah. pair, you flip it for ten grand and call it a day. You know. Yeah, I'm we shitted it. on all of them like last, like yo, it looks like Nike Talk got together, like colorblind Nike Talk got together, and they just imagined some shit. You know what I mean? It's like not, and plus there's only five, which I, all the StockX sales that were, they've been reported, I guess, were taken back because they weren't real. Like kids fucking around on StockX trying to get like ten grand for no reason. Shout out to Nike Talk. I don't know why they just cut that straight, but now nah, you know what I mean though. There's like those imagine yeah. what if uh, threads. You know, at least from back in the day. Hey, hey, that was, that was early in the Photoshop, though. If you knew how to do that, you know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. like, oh, how, how you turn the 12s that color? Oh, that's crazy. You know? Yo, but I had some people confused when I first learned Photoshop. That was like some of the first shit I was doing was making my own dunks and shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, to be real, they were pumps, Reebok pumps. But you guys know what I'm saying. I had some confused people going like, how Re Reebok doing what? When? Why would Reebok do this? <laughs> <laughs> to so we, no keep going you got it Al. no no you got it go ahead no just to kind of push forward i mean like there's a lot of things that we can imagine you know what i mean um that in particular it seems like this weird imaginary thing but there's a lot of hypotheticals that we could sort of live and talk with like did you guys see that um that what like the what if uh for a night or for a shoe deal the shit that i sent you guys yeah i've seen it mm -hmm. no i was sad well, I'm going to pull it up right now. So oh, basically, there was this hypothetical where it's like, if you could pick your sneaker deal, what would it be? And they give you some parameters. Um, let's throw it up right now. 
Oh, yeah, I did see this. Yeah. You already know what I'm choosing. No, tell us. I don't know what you're choosing. You don't know what I'm choosing? Mm-mm. Well, I'm, I'm torn between two. <laughs> you don't know what you're choosing? How was I supposed to know? I'm torn between two. <laughs> I'm either taking the uh, hundred million with MB because I, uh, you know, I already rock with MB's heavy, mm-hmm. or I'm or I'm going with with Adidas and and you know what I'm saying the Yay making, collab making the Heezys. I'm personally going Jordan. I thought you were gonna go Reebok. No, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going Jordan. Just I because don't know if I'm gonna make it the. Uh, 55? The 55, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I need that bread now. Like, I'm not wilding like, hey, I was wilding back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, No, the thing that I liked was you have access to all Jordans. Now, we, we're very aware that Jordan can be stingy with what silhouettes they give to people, but if I have access to all of them... Wait, I could get the zeros? I could, Don't just stop. Don't you dare do that. <laughs> Hey, you give me a couple thousand dollars, I'm gonna have access to all the Jordans I want. Like, <laughs> also that, ain't, that ain't, to me, that ain't worth me. You know, you can, I get do a shoe with Yay. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Ain't get paid. It's a wrap. True. Okay. What about you, Alan? Do you give this any thought? Yeah, I, I mean, I did. You know, as as a Nike boy, I, I kind of. But at the same time, it's like no. Um, I'm not gonna take the 10 million, especially when there's 100 million on the table. Um, I think I would probably, I would probably go New Balance. I mean, you you can make a fucking, you can make some great, you can have some good collabs. You make go some Kawhi money. Leonard on it. You can go, yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know, it's I, I think I would take New Balance. New Balance, um, yeah, cause then I, I already. I already rock with all the Amy Leon Dore, so then I would just I would just have multiple. Then because <laughs> you know when I I when I wear them I do gotta walk funny like all right I gotta keep these things fresh you know what I'm saying I like them too much for them to get messed up. So then I could just be kicking around in the Amy's that'd be crazy. Mm-hmm. There's not uh, enough talk about how you have to act completely different when you put a new pair of shoes on that you want to wear but not fuck up. Yeah, you gotta yes. walk different. You gotta walk. On the balls of your feet or something. You got tiptoe, baby steps. Tip-toe. It depends on the shoe. It depends on the shoe and the shape of the shoe. And material. And yeah. material. I started buying those things to put on your heel to prevent the heel drag, but I don't know if they help. I they I feel like they are helping me pr- like not drag my heels as much because like like look like I, my ones are like the heel is through. Got you. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, like, like that's that's how I don't know if that's how I walk or what. But how old are those shoes though? Five. Yeah, I mean that's five years of stomping around. You know what I mean? Yeah, but they look like they from '85. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you was also trying to run around and like <laughs> you were you were really stomping around, bro. Yeah. No. No. I, those those are shoes. When I brought them to New York, it was like a wrap. Like. Getting off the train, mm-hmm. walking mm-hmm. through Brooklyn, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, Luke, what did you say? What was your deal pick? I gotta go with Adidas. Come on, man. I'd want to. I want to see with everything Ye? that Ye's working on, and just be like, put, make, make these look like Yu Yu Hakusho shoes. I don't know. <laughs> he wow, would, nobody is showing any Reebok love or Puma love. Well, we, you know, two two percent stake in Puma brand. I don't know, bro. You don't get a signature shoe with with Puma. Yeah, and it's like, man, I'm not wearing wearing souped up Clydes for the rest of my life. Like, what? I'm cool on that. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I'm not. I don't need a signature shoe. I'm cool. I'll take the Jordans. I'll be. I'll just now. I don't have to worry about getting them or fucking trying to find whatever. Like, I'm. I'll just take that. I don't need a signature shoe. It's so cool. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't take the money, though? That's the, I mean, you know, sometimes it's about that bread, too, you know? Yeah, sometimes it is. But, I mean, part of happiness comes from, uh, like, getting what you want. And if I'm getting all the Jordans I want, I'm pretty sure I'll be pretty happy. Also, 15 mil is a lot of money, so I'm not trying to sleep on that. I'd be happy with the Nike deal. But at the same time, (laughs) 
that I don't know if that's the best on the on the screen. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, like you got access to all Nike shoes. It's like bet. I'm gonna just wear penny twos every day for the rest of my life <laughs> and chill on this ten million dollars. That's cool too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, also the other thing too, there's nothing stopping me from getting all the Jordans I want, and then I'll just go customize them myself, and then boom, there you go. That's my signature shoe, and oh, I yeah, get the I fifteen. They would get mad if I wore some Jordans with Nike on the back of them. Mm. <laughs> I would sue me. <laughs> Wait, you've been um just because we've already mentioned bootlegs before, and uh, you were just now did you follow that any of that Warren Lotus shit? You know what we're talking about when I say that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so yeah, I regret you, not. I regret not getting one of those. So you mentioned um, you were okay with the bootlegging of the Jeezy shit, right? So, but what are what are your feelings on like bootleg in general today? Because where I where I was in life at that time, I, I, that would have just put a target on me. I didn't have enough juice to get that off, so I never <laughs> personally had it, but I understood. It, you know what I'm saying? Got you. Guys, this is a uh, this is an interesting time, man, of the year. We're in um we're in fourth quarter, mm-hmm. holiday season. We got yep. Thanksgiving coming up uh, in a few days, uh, which means Black Friday, which means holiday shopping. Are you in the holiday mood right now? Yeah. So, no. Shopping wise, <laughs> not. I'm not talking about food wise and things like that. I'm talking about like shopping. Like, do you feel like? All right, like this is I'm gonna get a lot of deals or what do you are you what's going on? What are you thinking? Bro, I'm trying to move shit. I have three pairs of sneakers I bought last week. I need to do something with them now, you know? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And yeah, no, I'm I'm chilling on the year. I think I'm done for the year because I, I went too ham this year. I um I'm in the spirit of selling. So when I go home, I'm gonna take all the joints that are sellable out of my shit. I'm either gonna put them on StockX. Or I'm going to put them on Poshmark, like the used ones, because I got to get mm-hmm. that shit out of there. Last time I was home, I was like, man, these are just going to sit here forever and they're not doing shit. I might as well get some like holiday bread out of this because like people are going to want some shoes for the holiday, even if it is off Poshmark, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, it's very interesting because I feel like um, like it's it definitely doesn't feel it does not feel like the holidays because everyone looks forward to a Black Friday deal or mm-hmm. Black Friday. But there's, I mean, this year with the pandemic, people are, are hurting financially. Uh, people are not, like, truly looking forward to Black. And then everything's online. And I feel like I feel like all year has been Black Friday sales. They already started yeah. some Black Friday sales, which is crazy. Right. And when I say Black Friday sales, I mean, most merchants have been giving, you know, 30, 40 percent off deals. Yeah. Things have been on sale all year. You know, when, when people were getting their their, um, you know, their stimulus checks and they were getting, you know, six hundred dollars a week. People were legit. There was all these merchants were just dropping shit and just giving people deals. So with that being said, I think the Rob's holding up a pair of uh, LeBron. What are those? Uh, 11s? 12? 11s? Mm-hmm. 11s. LeBron 11s, yeah. Um, I, the, big, the big, I guess, Jordan brand Black Friday event is obviously the Fire Red 4s, which they did a shock drop on a couple, like a couple weeks ago. Rob, you said you were able to purchase, get a pair, right? First time I hit on the sneakers there. First time? That's the one? First time. Wow. How many yeah. shots did you take before you got that uh, one in? See, the thing was, I was real bougie. This is probably the most general thing that I've tried to get on there. Mm. But I've definitely, like, you know, this year I tried to get the uh, Ben & Jerry's. I tried to get the, uh, the Viotex. I tried to get the two pair of Space Hippies. I tried to get, you know, but Fear gods, you know, I only only the super hype stuff have I ever tried to get on sneakers. Travis Scott's the usual, the stuff yeah, that the most usual. people take losses on anyway. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you got, I mean, how did you like the? Uh, how do you like the the Fire Red Fours? You like the quality? Is it a good shoe? What's what's up? Mm-hmm. Any picture I've seen of the 89 version with bad quality. So I appreciate the, the quality on these because it's like, yeah, they, they 
they always, you know, the original, even on Jordan's feet, they look messed up. So they mm. supposed to look messed up. That's how they supposed to look. The right. tongue's supposed to look a little weird. Yeah. They're supposed to look wrong. They didn't, they didn't do them right the first time. So it's a retro of a shoe that they didn't do right the first time. Okay. Yes. Now, Rob, are you, are you like, like Chris and Luke were saying, they're trying, they're going to try to sell stuff. Are, Rob, are you going to sell anything for like this, the holiday season? Are you trying to like flip some pairs? I'm not, I'm not selling anything until I'm, I'm in trouble. So I'm, I'm <laughs> straight right now. So I'm, I'm just going to, now I, I'm keeping some stuff DS because the time might come, but you uh. know, I'm, I'm rocking most, most of the stuff, but some stuff I'm keeping, you know, dead stock. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing I'm going to shoot for the last thing for this year, actually, I don't even remember what, when the release date is or if it even came out, but there's those adapt 11s. I kind of, I'm into those. You're into the adapt 11s. Yeah. The auto lacing 11s. I like that shit. I mean, you guys know, like on, on design nerd shit, I always like when they mess around. I like the hyper adapts, like the first ones, those mm -hmm. really weren't for me. Those were a little too like, you know, mm -hmm. runner speed, like, you know, fast or whatever. But now that they applied, that shit to a shoe that I already like. I'm like, all right, I'll give this a shot. Even if it's like 400 bucks, I'll take a shot at it. Interesting. I don't know, bro. I saw a preview video of like them with, with the, with the lacing system. Yeah. I, that wiring on a Jordan looks like it would be very uncomfortable. Honestly, like I've heard complaints about it already. Well, have you, have any of you guys ever tried a pair of adapts on? I have not. No, okay. you have though. I have. Uh, one of the the most heavy shoes I've ever uh, attempted to put on. It, you know, it, it, it's the it's the motor. It's you know, it's like very. I, I've tried on the uh, adapt ones, which they weren't as bad. But the the second adapts that just came out, that the ones that were like, I think, three fifty or four hundred, like, it it's too heavy, man. Too too uncomfortable to play basketball in. No, no, no. But think about how much faster you'd be in a regular pair of shoes after playing in the adapt. That's true. They're trainers. Mm. Trainers, trainers yeah. bro. They you play in the adapts and then you throw on some countdown pack 11s after that. Bro, and then you, you super light. Like lightning, bro. You're just yeah. running around on the court. Imagine going from adapts to Chuck Taylors or something like that. You know? <laughs> You'd be the fastest on, motherfucker man. alive. Yeah, man. <laughs> So I, I, I also I wanted to, I wanted to ask Luke because I know we were talking about this earlier and I feel like uh, resale prices are are definitely to me coming down on certain things especially I've noticed on like SBs uh, certain yeah. SBs it's definitely coming down uh, I feel like uh, Nike and uh, also other retailers are doing such a good job at uh, pumping out so if a shoe comes out in April or came out in April they've restocked a few times, I think, bringing down the price. So it makes me wonder, and you said something, uh, you were like, well, maybe I'll start reselling shit after we get the next stimulus. Yeah, because I was saying, like, we noticed, like, this was, it's weird because it's, it's a holiday season, but we're also in a pandemic, and we're sitting in, like, this kind of this bubble where we don't know if we're going to go back into quarantine. We probably are, you know? So I think a lot of people are like hesitant to spend money right now. But if we get another stimulus from the government, everything's going to shoot back up. I think. And I don't think that's that crazy to think about. No, you, you're uh, you're you're not wrong. But um, I don't know. I, I it's hard for me to call that. Rob, what well, do you think, man? Well, I was going to say it depends on how much money it is. If it's another twelve hundred, then yeah, maybe. But if we're just getting like a little chump, like three hundred, not that three hundred is chump. Like I'm appreciate anything anybody gives me as far as money. But uh, like I don't think it's going to go that much because a lot of the shoes you can only get for four figures. The ones you're talking about, right? I I think it depends on what it is. So like the dunks was super going crazy, right? Yeah. But yeah. now they don't put out so many dunks that the dunk hype is dying. I don't think it's, and, I don't think it's dying. I definitely don't think it's dying. I think I it's think, just the market saturated. It's, it's slowing down. It's slowing down. It's going to start slowing down even more next year because there's mad dunks coming out next year. You know? And I think some of those like dunk lows, it was perfect timing because it was the beginning of spring. People were in the house, mm -hmm. you know, and now... Like, 
yeah, those those things are not going to be as hype. Um, well, a, lot, a lot of these seem to be in the like high two hundreds, which compared to when they first came out, and so I mean, some of these obviously are going to be more than others. They were going crazy. Before. Yeah, wild. Cra- yeah. That shit was bananas. Yeah, we saw Strange Loves jump from like four hundred to like nine hundred overnight, almost. Mm-hmm. We saw. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I don't know of anything that's that's slated to come out that's super hype. Supreme Supreme uh, the Supreme is, Dunks. Supreme Dunks is gonna be the test right there. Yeah. In twenty twenty one. What do those look like? Oh, uh, oh, oh, they look like the old ones, but they yeah. got the they got the new colors and the and, yeah, and yeah, low. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, that's gonna be this, the big test. But with the merger are you know what I'm saying, is the Supreme hype gonna be what it was? Oh no, I think that's still be because of the history behind the highs i think it's not like it's not gonna go no he said it was supreme microphone (laughs) as he said it's a supreme microphone (laughs) that supreme hype ain't going nowhere at least for a while so like they're they got 12 stores they're gonna give out right so you were saying before we locked in that you were hoping atlanta gets one it wouldn't make sense for me that you guys wouldn't get one. it don't make sense if if you open in 12 atlanta gotta get one yeah Atlanta well, got to get a Supreme store. They got to have a collab with, with three stacks. They <laughs> three stacks have photo team. They got to have the furry pants. <laughs> got to. They the got to have the, the, the... Come on, man. They got to have the camera, the, the, uh, the Polaroid camera. Mm-hmm. Polaroid X Supreme X Outcast. That's happening. <laughs> Triple label. Rob, there's a there's a conspiracy in our Discord that a bunch of people listen to this podcast and steal our ideas. So we'll know. This is the this is the thing. If they get a store in Atlanta and all that shit comes true, then that's when we'll know. That's well, I mean, know. it's cemented. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm the, I'm the first one to say it. I I might become a journalist. I might just be like, yeah, I broke the store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I might figure out. I'll figure out a way to profit. If they take my ID, I'll figure out a way to. You know what I'm saying? I'll scream. Grab this, put it up, and be like, "Yo, this my resume is right there. It speaks for itself." All them flutes y'all saw, that's because Outcast and Supreme flutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Actually, so wait, this is another interesting topic, though. So, like, where do you think these twelve stores are gonna go? Uh, there's probably gonna be another one in New York. No, there's we got two gonna, already. Got where, I mean, where two. are they gonna put them? Uptown? Who knows? Queens, baby. Queens get the money. No, Queens is getting Vegas. Nothing. I could see a Supreme in Vegas. I could see that. Mm-hmm. It, they, they must be talking worldwide. I don't remember if they said it was going to be only within the States or not, those 12. But worldwide, that would make sense. they have sense. one in Abu Dhabi? London. <laughs> Milan caught one already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do they have one in Paris? I don't know now. Wait, let me see. C- cover me. I'll try to see where are the store, all the stores. A Supreme um, Philippines, Chicago, Chicago. Wait, where That's are you guys? Dangerous. Where are you guys getting twelve stores from? I don't get. Wait, where are you? There was an article about uh, when VF bought, saying that they're not going to do anything with it other than open more stores. And twelve was the number that was. <laughs> no, twelve was the number that they had. We're not going to do anything. Tw- twelve is the number that they have. Twelve more stores. Is that not crazy? Isn't no, that crazy? Twelve Yo, is the number of stores they have, have. These people started in '94. Online shops started in 2000. They ain't had no online store until 2008. And if you called them, asking them to send you stuff, and you was in Atlanta and be like, "Hey, can can you know? Can you guys uh, send me like a book bag? You know, like I'll pay you." Blah blah blah. They'd be like, "No," and hang up the phone. Oh, at least they'd pick up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they don't. Well, yeah. Lawrence, you actually might be right. Maybe I, I put the 12 and then the they're going to open new stores together. No, they're not. There's no way they – that – that you open 12 stores. like that's, I better say 12 stores. You might have a store in Birmingham. You might have a store. You know what I'm saying? I mean, DC. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's like a Zoomies type operation at this point. You know, if you if you open twelve, yeah, nah, stores, it ain't Zoomies. It's still not Zoomies. I'm just, I know it's not Zoom, but I'm just saying, like, you you're not gonna dilute the brand that much to twelve new stores. But this is like, what I'm saying. Even if they did open twelve stores, they could open twenty more stores as long as they keep the quantity as low as it is, 
and do the consistent drops with that small amount of quantity, they're not going to die. They could open 30 more stores and then just distribute that amount to 20 teas or whatever each one. Rob, don't shake your head. You know exactly what I'm talking about. If, the, no. if it's that limited still, the hype's not dying. It's just more accessible to more people in other places vertically. Huh. Yeah, that, that's what kills the hype. Not if there's only like X amount of shirts. The but hype is from the quantity. You still have to make more shirts, bro. Like because there's more, there's more physical allocation. Yeah, that would, physical that that's what I'm that, saying. No, you don't. Yes, no, you but do. that would mean you that just, you have to take all you would from need other is stores. a couple bombs. If you had a couple bombs, mm. which gives you a ton of inventory, like say you open Guilt and you see Supreme on there, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> You yeah, but, like, but they have, have bombs all the time and it still extra. sells out. Huh? They bomb all the time and it still sells out. Exactly. But if you are making more stores. Yeah, that's that's bombs. the thing. I mean, you when you know the whole when you walk into Supreme, there's really nothing there. You know what I'm saying? Like the online shop sells out in five minutes you know it's that that's what the allure of it is so you adding 12 or you even add, i mean yeah i say another store or two you know within the next few years dope okay fine but you can't you, you can't add too many more stores bro you just can't supreme and vapor are two brands that have a touristy element to their flagship store that's true that's so true. if oh, people and don't feel like they have to travel to new york to get it then that's going to take away from that traffic that just like, I will, I will buy whatever. I just need to leave here with something that says Supreme. I need that. I need that bag. I need oh. that white bag with that box logo. I need something with a box logo. I need something that says Supreme before I leave to say, Hey, I went to New York and cop something. And and I, want, I want to add, I want to add on what Rob is saying. Cause I remember mm -hmm. when bait, was you know it was the lore of it was so there was you know there were no physical stores you know in, in the u.s and i remember i think it was around 2004 ish that the babe store opened in new york and and that you know that was like oh my god now i have access to this brand yeah yeah so and for us in atlanta it was like if you didn't get it from new york it ain't real mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. it off if you didn't get it from new york then yeah, you didn't get it. No, yeah, okay. I, you got you guys are kind of turning me. I was pretty confident what I said, but not when you bring the tourist part, like you gotta get it because you when you go you, all right, I'm turning around on that. That makes sense to me. Cause the tourists clean the store out. Yeah. Like it's yeah. one thing, like, yeah, they're they the things that people want, but you know, the store like to maintain business, you know, the whole time is because people travel and they like mm -hmm. they get stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh all right, yeah. I want to talk about this uh because it's happening this week and I was really uh I, I wasn't like pissed, but I was like, wow, uh cactus plant uh flea market, they did their uh their Swarovski <laughs> uh dunks. And obviously, you know, I was going for the resale. But the obviously, when you do the crystals on on a, on anything, it raises the price. The retail was five hundred and fifty dollars, and it was only open via raffle. And mm -hmm. it's uh, it, so when you say Rob, when you say the the hype on dunks are like, dude, it's still it's still fucking. I don't know, man. Uh, I remember when a Swarovski crystal BBC shirt was five hundred. This is a whole shoe. <laughs> he's not yeah. wrong he's not mm -hmm. wrong but yeah even with like even with the orange label stuff like the atlas collab and the and like i i got the like they're going down in price they were like 800 when they first came out now they're like 450 you know? i'm not saying it's dead i'm just saying it's going down dying might have might have sounded extreme but i'm just saying that it's going down it definitely is it definitely is what um yeah, what was the retail? What was the original retail on these? Five fifty. Uh, five fifty. Five fifty. Mm -hmm. And now they're going for seventeen. But who honestly, when you gonna wear these? 
Oh, I wasn't aware. Oh, of it, but bro, sure. no, this is one you just wear whatever. This is you can wear this with anything, especially the, Wait, the no, no, white no, one. But you're not wearing this with anything because them crystals not staying on. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's I think if like you're wearing you're them, you're not really worried if they're going to fall off or not. Yeah, I think you make if, a decision at that point. If you're not wearing these at an award show, then where, where, I mean, where else would you wear them? Vegas grocery store <laughs> <laughs> but the bodega i'm not i'm not i'm not i would not feel comfortable in a bodega wearing these <laughs> <laughs> they might I not mean, serve you bro they really won't <laughs> i mean i don't think i'd feel comfortable wearing these in general just because of how loud they are but i mean i it's it's this is not something i think that you try to coordinate too well these are gonna pop no matter what you're wearing you could be wearing like a, 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 a like a Swarovski, what anything else all over you, and this is these are still gonna pop. The thing about the Swarovski crystals is, like when you see a bunch of them together, you could just like go to Michaels, and I feel like you could you could do this shoe if you just got them little the little things like we used to put on art projects and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. You, could, yeah, yeah. you could do this yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that the green one's doing better than the white one. I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised at all either. They should have did one where they like they take two different colors or multiple colors and put them, or maybe that's what they'll do next. Man, I'm just giving away all the all the. <laughs> <games today. laughs> Buddy, that's our podcast. We just yeah. What are you? We, we are driving the culture. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm like, you could have, they could have had like, you know what I'm saying? Like take like an old colorway or take like one of them Lotus colorways, you know what I'm saying? And then, but do it in crystals, like the eBay colorway, but like crystals. Oh shit. I like that. I mean, they could literally crystify any of the classic colors and then that's a home yeah. run. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, come on. Diamond. Somebody Call up Nikki Diamonds right now. Yeah, it's good. Yo, the diamond dunks in the Swarovski, the, the cactus plant, uh, diamond supply, <laughs> Travis Scott dunk. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why is Travis involved? No, I want no. these two to move forward. He has to be the, involved, Rob. I want to. the culture to move forward, right? Yeah. And my swooshes. <laughs> A reversed Swarovski diamond dunk. Oh no, dude! <laughs> Come on, man. They're gonna is... take that idea, and then you're gonna be like, "Why are they doing this?" It's because we already went over this, man. They listened to us uh, with all the ice up on my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <sighs> oh fuck! <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. I know where to go. Do you want to talk about that that show's final episode? Oh yeah, oh, we got to it, we ladies can. and gentlemen. We finally finished this damn show. Oh, uh, Rob, I couldn't I make it. I couldn't make it through. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Where'd where'd we lose you? They lost me on the on the first episode. They skipped the line. <laughs> they supposed right. to be sneakerheads, but they skipped the line. It's like, come on, man. Oh shit. Yeah. Um, why are you bidding? Why are you bidding on all these shoes? And then these people become your friends. It's the same people that was bidding on <laughs> all these boxes with one shoe in them. Why the hell would this be the crew I run with? And y'all was the same fool bidding on the same. You have no idea how crazy he gets. Space. Yo. Like, off, off the jump, it's like, I would never mess with y'all again. If I see y'all in the streets, I'm laughing at you. Like, hey, even though I bought it, I'm like, nah, y'all, y'all whack. Rob, so the last episode ended with them in Hong Kong getting arrested, and they had to get Jason Statham to bail them out. That's well, the, that's the fifth episode. Huh? Jason Statham. <laughs> yeah. Like Hobbs and Shaw, Jason Statham? <laughs> yes. The hell he got to do with sneakers? He's not in the show. He's only mentioned by name. Yeah. If that makes no. you feel any better. So it could have been anybody. It could have yes. been anybody. They they oh could have. Also, Baron <laughs> Davis was on the plane with them too. Actual Baron Davis, and they chose to go with Jason Statham. It's always gonna be actual Baron Davis. I don't know if y'all watch. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Rob, let me this wait, wait, let me chill. Wait, wait. Yo, Rob, there's a there's an episode where actual Paul Pierce 
actual Michael Rappaport and actual somebody else. Oh, no, no, and not Mark Wahlberg play <laughs> tennis. <laughs> yes. They all play tennis together. And yeah. Mark, not Wahlberg, is wearing the Oregon Force. And the whole thing they're trying to do is get him to lose so he so he'll give away the shoes. Come on, man. I ain't even like <laughs> Paul Pierce's shoes when he was hooping mm. great. He would make a great three and his shoes would look terrible. <laughs> so you, you had you had Little Rel in the last episode. You had uh Jason Mark. Mm-hmm. Just a lot of a lot okay. of all right. A lot of cameos. Did, they, did Jason Mark play like a janitor, or was he like a, a window wiper? <laughs> no, like he plays he himself. Plays plays where himself. he cleans stuff. Yeah, he, he plays all, himself. Plays himself. Okay. So, Rob, you remember that the premise of the show ended up being they had to find the Jordan Zeros. What? <laughs> <laughs> So the whole the whole like adventure part of the show is uh, the Jordan the, Zero. Yeah, the the dude Devin and uh, King Bach uh, have to go find the legendary Jordan Zeros. The ships? No, not even the not ships. Even, not ships. even the ships. The Jordan Zero. The Jordan. The, <laughs> um, these are some Westbrooks. <laughs> no, these are those, Jordan those zeros. Twenty eights to mm. say why not all over them? Are those Jordan zeros? We don't get a mm. close up on them, so but they basically look like SBs. Well, I mean, we they they in the last episode, Rob. Or do you should we not talk about this, or do you yeah, do you want to watch now? Spoil, you can't spoil up. something I don't want to see. <laughs> okay, cool. So no, so they end up finding. So basically, dude, all right, they went to Hong Kong. To find the Jordan Zeros because the guy who has the Zeros is allegedly a big NSYNC fan, and they had a concert in Hong Kong, so they were going to go. <laughs> this is not, I'm not making this shit up. He's not making it up. <laughs> Justin Timberlake was, was Justin Timberlake there with them whack swooshes on the threes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. you already know how I feel about that. <laughs> I know, bro. I can't. I can't. So what happens? Oh, so King King Bach trades his customized sneakers, the shoes that he customized himself, oh. for the Jordan Zeros, and then they get them and they bring them back home to the mm-hmm. to like some sneakerhead guy who said he would trade his entire collection for a pair of these Zeros. After Jason Statham breaks him out of Hong Kong prison. After Jason mm-hmm. Statham. All these for $5,000? Pretty- yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All of these for a pair of white cement fours, honestly. That's Which, what it- so we saw the shoe that allegedly is the Zero. I don't, I don't know what shoe that technically is. It looks like some vandals, to be honest. But, like, what do you guys think of the shoe that they are calling the Zero? I mean, it doesn't need to be made. That's what I think. <laughs> It didn't need to be made. There's enough <laughs> grilled shoes. Just make it about the like the mags. Just make it about the mags. Also, you know what? Now that Rob mentioned the five thousand, they never resolve the five thousand dollars that the dude spent. No. Well, no. He said, yeah. He, the he whole told show. His, he told his wife they didn't get a job to pay the money back, basically. Okay. Yeah. After he committed fraud. <laughs> right. That's correct. Because they told a credit card company that they didn't know nothing about it. Yeah. <laughs> and he could have framed one of the other people had they not been his friend. Yeah. So. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, and then, like, the goofy white kid ends up with the, with the, with the, with the girl that knows all the sneaker people. Yeah. Yeah. So he, so I saw like that little, coming. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh, what else happened? The Asian kid from the beginning was a piece of shit the whole yep. time. Yeah. Consistently okay. was a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I just can't imagine Jason Mark getting the script for the show and then like being okay. The when they were treating it like it was an operation. So Rob, uh, the Asian dude spills like this like spinach juice on the zeros. So they go to Jason Mark to see if he could fix it, and they treat it like it's an operation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, there's like a waiting room, and he's like, "Oh, are the shoes okay?" He's like, "Oh, it's a little touch and go there for a second. <laughs> you know, Yo, Jason you? Mark didn't get the whole script. You know that. You no, know, Jason Mark just got his part. Jason of Mark course. was just like, "People are gonna know what you look like." Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh? <laughs> also, that was the first time I ever seen Jason Mark. There you go. Same. 
Also, I had a, I had a homeboy. I told him to go to Jason Mark, go to the flagship store to get some shoes clean, and I don't know. They did not look that different when he got them back. <laughs> I don't, uh, that's another discussion altogether. Does, does any of that shit really work? Uh, Rejuvenator is pretty good. Nothing works better than the uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Eraser. Yeah, yep. I don't know or, what that um, stuff is made out of. I don't know if it's good for your health or your shoes, but... The it, OxyClean it spray, too. You said what? The OxyClean spray is good, too. If you use the spray, not yeah. like the not like the shit, that, the, the, the powder or whatever, but if you spray and dab on whatever it is, it'll fix it. Oh. R.I.P. Billy Mays, man. Yeah, rest in peace. Oof. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, he makes up with his wife, who finds out about the sneaker thing, uh, and then that's it. I think that's the whole show. Well, and, uh, there was a there was a, a Marvel like post credit. Did you guys see that? Uh, of of what? Why are you waiting around? Never. <laughs> it wasn't completely Sorry, after the credits. To make you watch some. It's about, oh, you're talking about King Bach breaking down yeah, a sneaker or something? Yeah, King Bach went to some... Yeah. yeah, he went to like some shit and he's like taking it apart, leaving it open for a season two. Yeah, it's, yeah he was like, oh, the, season two is going to be around King, King Batch customizing the zeros that we just spent six episodes looking for. So he basically bought the Virgil Abloh it. That's basically what he bought. Yeah. He, bought the, he bought the Virgil. He bought the oh, War and Lotus this shit. Yeah. He bought the Virgil this shit. Wow. Oh, shit. He's going to be coming out going like, I, I cut a hole in it. Because when I hit Google image on Jordan Zero, it just shows me the worst Jordans. It's just like, oh, you want to look at a bunch of dub zeros? <laughs> or you want to look at some why not 2.0s? Or you want to look at, like, it's everything but whatever y'all talking about. Yeah. <laughs> these are the, well, I'll put it up. This is a wild, wild fucking Google search. Yeah, these are all fucking Jordan misses right here, baby. This might have well yeah. been in the fucking oh, Jordan yeah. Zeros. Literally any of these. It would have <laughs> been funny if they put, like, the Jordan Zeros was really some Jordans that everybody forgot about. Like, they were just some T-runners. <laughs> I thought it was going to be, like, some, like, anime shit where it was, like, it's not about the prize, it's about the journey. The friends that you make <laughs> yeah, along the way. Yeah, yeah. They could have did it where you open a box, glow on a face, sound effect, but you never see the shoes. You yeah. know, the yeah. fact that they showed you the shoes shows <clears throat> that they, yeah, they really all over the place with that. Yeah, they could have really pulp fictioned, but they didn't. They just gave mm -hmm. you the worst looking shoe. <laughs> and then somebody said this line. Somebody, somebody sat in a room and wrote this line. They said, "Hey, do you think they'll make a TV show about us?" No, nobody wants to watch a sneakerhead <laughs> show. Oh yeah, that was yeah, and that's that was, right. That that is the truth. And he wasn't. I, yeah, I think we're we the only got watchers. A sneakerhead show is called Seinfeld. It's called The Fresh Prince. It's called The King of Queens. Facts. Like, come on, man. <laughs> that's true. Your whole life is not just about getting sneakers. You get sneakers, and then you just you know you do your life. whole life. Yeah. But I f I feel like it. But this is the this is what's so crazy. Like everyone wants to be part of this the culture. Everyone wants to be part of this this whole. I'm a sneakerhead, and I'm this and that, and it's like that's that's where we're at right now with this shit. So yeah, if you want to consistently miss out on things you like, then join up. It's a it's yeah. a great time. Sign your ass <clears throat> up. Yeah, I would. I would. I had a for the longest said I was gonna make a script for a movie called The Hunt for Red Octobers, but then you know, the some stuff happened, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I you know feel the same way about that. But I I felt like that would have been a good like stoner comedy type thing. <laughs> Yes, I'm, we we've been half joking, half serious about writing our own show. Yeah, I think we, we at some point we need to. When life's a little more normal, we can get in a room, we can kick around some actual ideas. Rob, you're invited, of course. Like, well, we could, we should write something. At least put something down on paper. I just want to. I want to recreate the moment where L was when <laughs> the, the red october drops i want to just like everything in the world just drops <laughs> to the ground like planes land fucking basketballs land like everything everything on the god's green earth birds yeah i don't want to even talk about that day <laughs> just, 
<laughs> it still bring. I don't even like talking about that day to be honest with you. It's like so it pisses me off so much. So. <laughs> Rob, where were you when you found out the Red Octobers dropped? <clears throat> I was headed to go shoot some Vine videos. Oh shit! Oh, that's that's that is a vintage. <laughs> it was wow. a group of guys in Atlanta. They would do vines. Uh, B dot that um, Br- Brandon Armstrong. He does like all the basketball impressions. Mm-hmm. DC Young Fly used to be over there. Like it was like a bunch of guys in Atlanta. But like when I got there, they were like, "Oh man, the Red October just dropped on Nike.com." And I was like, "Man, no way!" You know what I'm saying? And then I like looked on my computer. And the tweet was like, it said like 34 minutes ago. And I was just like, <laughs> as someone who just used to go to Nike.com and type Yeezy in there like every day in the search just to see if something would pop up. Yeah. Ever since the ever since they dropped them in like 09, it was just like, okay, well, they did it once before. Maybe they'll do it again. Like that whole summer, mm-hmm. the whole summer every day at some point i was like well let me see you know back on here like you know i knew i had the product number i put the product number in nope it's still still not there all right it might come back it might <laughs> fucking funny they say rob <laughs> still checks every morning to this day <laughs> come on man he just checks more places now he checks the sneakers, sneakers that won't even let me put that as one of my favorites it's like come on man <laughs> you know you're not getting these <laughs> What a fucking day. That Because that's Ooh. before they even had us on these apps. Ye got us yeah. on the apps. When Ye went to Adidas, then it was like, oh, the Adidas. Confirmed. Confirmed yeah. app. You know what I'm saying? This well, is going to be the future. We're going we gonna to finally get our shoes. Nope. Well, it's funny. They, they both they both were released around the same exact same time. time. Yeah. All-Star Weekend 2015. That was when they both really uh, were, were out. And, and it's been apps since, man. So... Hey man, uh, you got to believe, man. You definitely do. Got to believe. I think uh I think we're at a point where we can uh start to dismount here, right? Yeah. I think yeah, I think we can, man. Yeah. Uh what do you got, Rob? Oh, there he is. He got the ones. Mm-hmm. Eventually, oh, you man. know what I'm saying? Like I didn't get them new, you know. <laughs> Some life was lived in these, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> Those Dude. look like not bad condition though. Yeah, they're not they're not bad condition, but I, don't, a, I also don't feel bad about wearing them. I've worn them on a plane. I've worn them, you know, in a casino before. Mm-hmm. Actually, real quick, Rob, just because you and I off mic were kicking it one night and you talked about you don't like wearing your shoes, some of like the specialty shit out. <laughs> like the Travis's like you because you didn't want to explain them, you know what I mean? Well, I wear the Travis's, but um, I don't wear them all the time. Mm-hmm. I, what were you saying? Because you were like, <clears throat> you were like, yeah, I just don't want people to like ask me questions and then like. No, yeah, I don't like, I don't like talking about my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's the I, one I sneakerhead just, that I is like, yo, <laughs> yeah, don't talk to me about my shit. Yeah. No, nah, don't talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that after. I'm like, dude, you're the one guy who wants the hype shit. That's like, yo, don't fucking don't even compliment me. me. I mean, talk talk to some other people about it. Don't talk to me about <laughs> it. Don't, don't bring it to me. That's how it was when I first seen Deloach. He had on the Lance Mountains. I was like, it'd be lame as hell if I came up to this complete stranger. <laughs> like, oh, man, you got the Lance Mountains. Oh, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? What if I scratch them off right now? You know, like, you like, yo, get out of here. Get out of my face. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't tell him till I knew him. You know what I'm saying? After we had a good conversation, I like, yeah, I see you a while back. You had the Lance Mountains. Bro. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I was... <laughs> I was going to bring it to him at, at first. You know what I'm saying? I'm new to the city. That would be the worst. The next thing I know, every every show's like, yeah, that's that weird kid. He came up to me talking <laughs> crazy. Talking about my last balance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, your new nickname is Loach Mountain, dog. Oh, that's funny, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, uh, you still about that kombucha life? Of course, bro. That's Yeah, okay. man. I'm definitely about that life, man. Yo, he has that shit with breakfast. Yeah, yeah, I do, man. I love kombucha. That's my shit, man. When he gets drunk, he drinks hard kombucha. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, like, what's hard kombucha? It's got more booze in it. Yeah, it got more booze in it. It's like a, it's like okay. a, like a beer. Get that six percent in there, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a white claw. Yeah. So. <laughs> Averaging about a four yoga mats right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, so you already know. I love. I mean, I love that shit, man. Well, Rob, thanks for coming in and hopping by. You know, hanging out with us for a little while. You got any last thoughts before we do our little wrap up here? Um, like, I don't know if people, if anybody got help for people who like just cop random stuff for no reason then I really need that. Like, if there's any, like, kind of way to get out of the game, that's what I need. I bought I bought a Bape Fresh Prince hat yesterday, mm-hmm. and I don't really know, you know what I'm saying? I don't really know when a 30-something-year-old person is supposed <laughs> to wear a Bape Camo Fresh Prince hat. <laughs> Bro, you got you know to get into the late night. You got to get into the late night so late you can night, wear it. I wear the, wear the, the, the Babe and Fresh Prince collect. But I, I seen it and I was like, I got to do it. Yeah. I was like. The Baby Milo was, hat? I, huh? The, the Baby Milo hat? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh. how am I going to do it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't even uh, think I have anything in my closet that color yellow. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we one day do have to talk about how we just buy shit, even though we sh- like, there was no reason that we have nothing to match. There's just like, just that feeling of like, damn, I got to have that. <clears throat> got to have. Yep. Yep. That's for another time. So thank you again, Rob. Everyone follow Rob at Rob Hayes. That's all, all your social media is at A-Z, uh, H-A-Z-E, right? <clears throat> Uh, no, my Twitter is Robert is the man. That's right. So Robert but is the man on Twitter. Tweet at Rob Hayes and harass him because <laughs> um, he won't give me the don't. He won't give me the username. The man tweets once a year. Like it's like, oh yeah, my dog did something else. You know, <laughs> I'll tweet again next year. So yeah, if you if you got some spare time, harass that dude. Try to try to give me my uh, username. Bro, that's okay. like that's like me. I'm trying to I'm trying to get this dude named Kombucha Poppy to give me. Uh, <laughs> there's, told, an- bro, there's another Kombucha Poppy. Th- there's a well, Rob had Rob. You had called me Kombucha Poppy back I in the day. The phrase, yeah. And Ooh. and I and I remember Rob had called, and I was like, let me check this shit out on, oh. the, on the gram, and and then fucking uh, Kombucha Poppy is a guy, and I messaged him. I'm like, bro, like you like same thing. You don't tweet. You don't fucking, you don't, I mean, you don't post pictures on Instagram. Like, you don't do, can I have kombucha poppy? And he just won't give it to me. Yo, I'm looking at this dude right now. Hold on. <laughs> I'm a... Kombucha. <laughs> He's seven it's another posts. dude named Rob Hayes, but it's like Rob Hayes one or something on Instagram. And he was like, man, all these people think I'm you. And I was like, <laughs> hey, man, I'm... I've been Rob Hayes since the beginning of Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't mm-hmm. get mad at me. Like, I post. Imagine if Kombucha Poppy's like, like, not trying to be funny, like dead or some shit. And I'm like tweeting at him and I'm like, yo, bro, I want that fucking name. You're man. tweeting at a ghost? <laughs> the last time he posted was 2013. Yeah. Who? And that's Kombucha, Kombucha, Poppy. Kombucha Poppy. Oh, so he got, so Drake made his name Champagne Poppy. He got Kombucha Poppy. And then he just forgot his passport. <laughs> yeah, he, just, he can't him. even give it to you if he wanted to because he don't remember how to get it. <laughs> Lawrence, account. I like how you do follow him, though. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do you follow give him, him the respect just on his name. Hey, yeah. the minute Kombucha Poppy puts his location on, it's a wrap. <laughs> Lawrence going to pull up and like, yo, I got some up. yoga mats for you right now. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, I, I'm like, yo, I want kombucha poppy, yo. That's I, all right. So we got a we got a couple to do's here. So uh, harass not only Rob Hayes on Twitter, but kombucha poppy on Instagram. Uh, you can follow uh, Luke at Trevisus on all platforms. Lawrence at LZD three two five on all platforms. Me at Not That Chini on all platforms. And then on the podcast Instagram, we got an email that you could email us, and there's a phone number you could leave a voicemail or text. So you got plenty of options to hit us up. Throw some questions at us. We'll answer them on air. And join the Discord. Discord is the spot right now. Discord's popping. Also, I think it's time for us to announce the winner. Oh, that's right. So we had a contest. Uh, what's this chick's name? Hold up. Whoa. Oh. 
Wow. Well, first, first, let's let's uh, talk let's about what the, we're what we're giving geez. away, Chris. Oh yeah. All right, you take it away, Luke. Okay. I already so, fucked it up. So we are doing a collab- We are doing a promotion with uh, Do or Die, uh, a company, uh, an Instagram account that does like a specializations in um, acid washed uh, Nike wear, which is pretty fun. <laughs> uh we so we did a little following thing and we had a bunch of submissions come in uh we did a random number generator for every single person in there uh we did have a couple bumps in the road because some people didn't follow all the rules some of us some of the followers were not all the same right <laughs> yep what the fuck guys come on read it's the okay rule. though it's oh, all right it's all right it's all right because we got a winner and our winner is uh at camilla uh, camille andrea xo so congrats to Camille. Congrats. Yes, congrats, Camille. Congrats. We're going to get into in, in contact with you, and we're going to figure out like your sizing and where we're going to ship it to you. And yes. also consider with the holidays coming up, um, this, this dude's a local dude in Seattle. He does all the shit by hand. If you want a good, thoughtful gift made by a person by hand, he's a great option. Yes. Support uh, small businesses, everybody. How you, you, how you spell do or die? Uh, D0... <clears throat> O R D Y three. Great call out, Rob. Actually, proper way to shout the dude out. Well, I couldn't find it. I was trying to see what he what he does. So yeah, follow. All right. Oh, dope. Yeah, he's got. No, he's good. He's he's got some great shit. And it's nice to be able to have someone in Seattle connect with us over here. So you basically got a coast to coast fucking little collaborative giveaway here. There you go. Um, and that's it. All right. So we'll talk to you guys next week and, uh, yeah, fucking have a good week. All right. Peace. Peace.